All right, welcome to um, uh, Rob and Tom's Tuk Tuk Tips number two. Um, but so today we just wanted to show you um, a little bit of information about the carburetor itself. Um, and normally, pretty much 98% of all the problems that happen on the tuk-tuk are because of the amount of fuel that the, the, uh, the engine's getting. It's either getting too much fuel or it's getting too little fuel, or it's not idling fast, it was idling fast or too slow. Um, and all these things can actually be adjusted on the carburetor. So when you get your tuk-tuk delivered, um, it should be working absolutely perfectly. But after a few days of use or weeks of use, it starts, um, starts running in. You might need to do some very minor adjustments, adjustments to the carburetor um, to help uh, to help improve things. So Tom's going to show you first of all where the carburetor is in the tuk-tuk and then we're going to have one we'll take out for you and show you how to do the adjustments to it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks Tom. So if you come with me this way you have an engine light and it is literally directly you've got the exhaust here if you follow that straight back you'll see a large hand-sized um, aluminium housing with a couple of pipes and cables going towards it. And that's it, that's all you need to do to identify it. Okay, so we've managed to um, take a carburetor out of the tuk-tuk for you, so we can just show you in a bit more detail the carburetor, but obviously yours will be inside the tuk-tuk itself. Um, there's a few um, situations that you might need to have a look at the carburetor, as we discussed before. Um, so the first one being, if you've not used your tuk-tuk for a while, um, and then you get in it, and you turn the key, and the engine turns over, but it doesn't fire up. Um, first of all, make sure you've got fuel. Most important, have you actually got fuel in, the, in your tank? Um, if you have got if you've checked that and you have got fuel in your tank then the next thing is actually to look at see if the fuel is running all the way to the carburetor tom if you just show us yeah sure so once you've opened the hatch door which will be from here so you've opened it out you've got the main engine here and as we said before you've got the exhaust that comes up here if you follow that straight back over the top of the engine and then down to the back what you'll see from your view is that with the engine being here what you need to do is this grey pipe here, it could be different models vary, so it could be on this side or it could be on this side, but it is predominantly a grey pipe that if you follow it should have a filter on one end. That means that you have got the fuel line. So all you need to do is just give it a twist. Come on Tom. <laughs> and just pull it off. It will be easier in situ because the engine is going to be holding the carburetor. And once you've pulled it off, all you need to do is just let the fuel run out of this pipe for about two seconds. And that should get rid of any airlocks that have been introduced after not using it for a good few days. Push the pipe back on, like so. Go back to the, the ignition pull your choke all the way out, and then just turn the key. And hopefully, if you've only not used it for a few weeks, um, then that should be the fix. You'll know that then fuel is running to the carburetor. Um, if that doesn't work, um, um, then you might need to make some other adjustments to your carburetor. Um, and the other two major adjustments that you can have are the idle speed or the amount of fuel going to the carburetor. And Tom will talk you through the two little ways of adjusting those. So, your idle speed, again, Different carburetors can vary, but um, they're either on this side or this side. Always the lower, closer brass uh, knob is always closer to you. The one that's further away and higher is the idle speed. Now, to introduce more fuel to the mixture, all you would do is turn it anti-clockwise quarter of a turn at a time. Now for the idle speed, that's complete, it's the opposite. You wind it in to increase the idle speed and you wind it outward to decrease the idle speed. And, and the it. idle speed is, obviously, if you're driving around, you've, you've had the choke out, you put your choke back in, and you, the engine's warm, and you stop, and you can hear the engine turning over still quite fast. Whilst the engine is turning fast, 
just go back and just have a little bit of an adjustment. And, and on, the, on the idle, which is the top of the two um, brass screws, you're actually going to wind that Outward. outwards to, to in order it. to slow down the idle speed. Um, if you find that when the engine's warm and you stop at traffic lights, and, you th and, and every time, you, with the choke being in, every time you stop at traffic lights or wherever you stop, then the engine cuts out, then it's not quite idling fast enough. And if, the, if you need to make it idle faster, then you just wind your screw um, Inward. inwards. Yes. Wind it in a little bit. Um, again, just a quarter turn at a time and see what difference that makes. And that should be the fix to 98% of the problems that you'll have with e -talk. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.